We have quite a bit of information to go over. Pokemon! 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 Hello everyone, I'm Dustin Mental, and welcome to another Pokemon Sun and Pokemon video. Today, we're, uh, I'm not going to go through every single bit of information that was revealed, at least not in depth. I'll try to go over as much as I possibly can, but note that I will just briefly talk about things as much as possible because I do not want this video to go long. Now, this is a combination of video that was inf introduced today as of recording. It was released like over nearly uh, 12 hours ago. Uh, 6 a.m. I believe and now it's almost 6 p.m. So 12 hours have gone by and I've decided to record a video on the new sun and moon information that was revealed as well as that little tidbit that we got earlier. I don't remember what it was for. I think it was from the Nintendo Direct on the first or something. I believe there was something that we need to go over. But I was just waiting for the sixth because I knew that there was going to be information and oh boy did we get a lot of information so of course let's go ahead and jump right in i'm not going to go into the new new pokemon but i'm going to instead start with the pokemon that we were revealed uh like a week ago approximately or yeah uh, like very close to a week ago and of course that was the alolan Rattata. and of course we got this little black colored with the uh, like beige, I believe, Ratata with like a mustache. Uh, no offense to anyone, but he kind of looks uh, like Latino or Mexican or something of that nature. I promise I'm not being offensive or anything. I'm just saying that's what it looks like to me. And of course, it was Ratata that was the whole big mystery of why the Alolan region actually gathered young goose to the region and I'm not really that happy about it because I was expecting like I don't know like some sort of snake or some sort of other reptile or something but are you telling me that that it was Rattata that Young Goose was imported from some other random region and it's because of Rattata really that's Okay, whatever. Anyway, it is a dor dor dork. It, it is a dork type, you know, because, you know, the geek types, you know, there's just too many geek types and nerd types. We needed a dork type now. So, anyway, dark normal type, it of course is the mouse Pokemon. It has gluttony and hustle. Gluttony, I believe, allows you to reuse berries, I believe. Let me just check real quick. Like, you use a berry, and with gluttony, it allows you to eat it. Oh, okay, so never mind. Encourage the early use of a held berry, so yeah. Gluttony uses the Pokemon to eat berries that are normally eaten at 25% HP or 50% lower. So, it, I don't think it's going to explain... Yeah, so it just makes the uh, Pokemon eat the berry faster... So, uh, and then of course as Hustle, which increases a power for accuracy. So of course that's a Lolan Rattata, and it says of course territory with young goose. Uh, it w became nocturnal and nests several and dozen a Lolan Raticate serve as their bosses. As a countermeasure to exploding Rattata population, young goose were imported and released. Which I looked at that before, trying to make sense. To better avoid young goose ratata change their preferred environments and circadian rhythms. The which I believe circadian rhythms is like your rhythm throughout the day, like your day night cycle for humans or whatever. So these adaptations made their new environment uh, to their new environment led to the changed form. Alolan Rattata have an excellent capacity for sniffing out delicious foods in Alola. They pay no attention to foods that aren't fresh. 
like I said, Alolan Ratatad looks pretty cool and er interesting or whatever. I think I said that, did I? But it, it, it is interesting. I just don't like the fact that Young Goose, that was why Young Goose were imported was because of Ratatad. Because that really doesn't make any sense. I mean, a rodent eating another rodent type Pokemon? I, or, well, no, actually, Mongooses aren't rodents, are they? But even still kind of strange, you know, that they would do something like that. Anyway, let's move on to Alolan Raticate, and I made a Twitter about this on my Twitter, or I made a Twitter, I made a Twitter account all about this, you can find it out on Twitter, no, I made a tweet about this, and when I saw Alolan Raticate, yeah, I, I get that it's fat and chubby or whatever, but the first thing that I thought of was a Mafia Gangster Boss, and at the time I was like trying to uh, wrap my head around why it made me look like that and it kind of looks like Marlon Brando from Godfather maybe <laughs> at least that's what I'm thinking of uh, when I think of Alolan Radicate and I think that's such an interesting twist or whatever now this one I don't mind it being compared to like the Godfather unlike Donald Trump and Young Goose and Gumshoes this one seems like it makes a lot of sense or it to be related off of like the Godfather or something like that. So that's why I thought that was interesting. Uh, so yeah, it also has gluttony and hustle, dark normal as usual. Their diet is higher in calories than ordinary radicate. As a result, they become hefty. They only eat fresh fruits and high class ingredients. Rumors about restaurants taking advantage of radicate's taste buds along with cho and choosing to ingredients to buy and having it taste new dishes stockpile huge amounts of foods they send Alolan Radita to gather food while they stay in their home and eat uh, and this is interesting and I'm not sure if I'll talk about this any more depth later on but it says here Alolan Radicate is the totem Pokemon of the trial that takes place in Verdant Cavern on Mele Mele Island in Pokemon Moon. It summons Rattata to help it confront those who take on the trial. And there's an asterisk here. Gumshoes appears as a totem Pokemon in Verdant Cavern in Pokemon Sun. I will talk a little bit more about that when we get to that particular feature. But yes, it does seem like there is going to be version exclusives, and we'll talk a little bit more about version exclusives in a moment. So let's go ahead and talk about the two new Pokemon that were revealed, at, that were real. So of course, we have one of the weirdest Pokemon revealed so far, and of course, that is none other than Type Null. Now... This one confused me a little bit, not not because I thought it was like a new type, like introducing type null. I mean, there there was a slight flash. that was like, what, really? That, but but the way that they were introducing it made no sense. And then it zoomed out and it showed the Pokemon, you know. And then it said like normal type and its ability. And I'm like, what? It took me a long time to realize that type null was its name. Like, I think it took me f until the next Pokemon to be revealed that I'm like, wait a minute, that's its name? That is confusing. And then it, it did seem like it's a name. Now, a lot of people are criticizing the name, and I understand that it is a little off. Uh, but the way that I think of it is this just seems like something somebody made. Like, someone found this Pokemon or they designed this Pokemon and they didn't really want to come up with any sort of interesting name because they didn't really care and I think type null is more of just a it's like code name or something like that and because it's a code name that's why it's its actual name because it is a made-up Pokemon basically you know uh, by scientists it's it's the synthetic Pokemon, it's a normal type for some strange reason, and it has the bizarre battle armor. Now, battle armor does make sense, but given everything about type null, this literally doesn't make any sense 
why it only has battle armor because if we read its information on it this pokemon wearing a mask has been dubbed null meaning nothing the shapes in front of its front hind legs are clearly different type null was constructed to synthesize the strengths of various pokemon enabling it to adapt to any situation the mask fitted is designed to control its latent powers it also serves to hinder type null's agility to complete a mission, there was a need for a Pokemon powerful enough to rival these Pokemon often spoken in mythology. And that's why it makes no sense for this to battle armor. It's like saying Arceus can change into multiple types depending on the plate it's holding, but it actually has no ability to actually show this. So I don't know if Titanol has a form change where it has a different ability. And if that's fine, if that if that happens, that'll make sense, but Type Null seemed like it deserved a very particular, specific ability, and it just doesn't make any sense that its only ability prevents critical hits. I mean, it makes sense in some ways, but not when you're talking about the Pokemon. Like, sure, Battle Armor, it's, it's extremely heavy. Its helmet that it's wearing is very heavy. The mask that it's wearing or whatever, and it's been adapted to every... Uh, type of situation so therefore it wouldn't necessarily have a strong weakness to anything that critical hits would do but still it really doesn't make any sense to me that this only has battle armor so I'm hoping that this has a form change and as for my opinion on this this looks like really cool and it looks like a really awesome Pokemon and I can't wait to see it in the games and there's a little bit more information on it but of course we have to talk about it another character that was introduced so we'll come back to type null a little bit later on in this particular video so then we're going to go into one of the things that i am looking forward to the most out of pokemon sun and moon so far and of course that is jengmo -O, or whatever you want to pronounce that name it's jengmo dash o there's something to do with Hawaiian to, about a lizard or something of that nature. I don't know how you would pronounce it. So Jengma O, Jengma O is what I'm going to call it. It's of course the Scaly Pokemon, a dragon, and it's got bulletproof and soundproof. Both of these are very interesting because bulletproof prevents certain attacks like Aura Sphere, Bullet Punch, I believe. I think it was Bullet Punch that it could prevent as well. There's a whole, there's a whole list on. Bulbapedia about things that it is a immune to, and I don't know if Bullet Punch was one of those. Let me look real quick. It makes sense if it's Bulletproof or Bullet Punch. Nope. So, like uh, Acid Spray, Aura Sphere, Barrage, Bullet Seed, Egg Bomb, Electro Ball, Energy Ball, you know, all of those type of attacks. Octazooka, Mud Bomb, all of those bombs, bullet attacks, or whatever, those are moves that will deal no attack, a damage to uh, Jingo Mo O. Jingmo O. -oh, if I can go back to its. There you go. Jingmo O, -oh, yeah. Bullet and soundproof, you know, prevents like hyper voice and, and moves of like that supersonic and stuff. So I'm really looking forward to this Pokemon, and there's a particular anime video of a continuation of a video project that I already made and uploaded in regards to the Sun and Moon anime, which you probably already may already know about it. This is definitely going to be one of those uh, nine or tens, if you know what I'm saying, in that in regards to that particular project. I, I'm still thinking of working on it. I, there's a lot of Pokemon to go through in regards to the uh, Pokemon Sun and Anime discussion of these Pokemon. But anyway, jengmo -Oh has the pride of a warrior. It's humble about its capabilities and pursuit to become stronger. It never neglects, neglects its training. Uh, it uses its skill on its head for both offense and defense. It never, it never turns its backs to its enemies. Many trainers see this behavior and take it as proof as Jengamo is a valiant Pokemon. It lives in harsh locales like canyons where no other people or Pokemon are around so they can live together and train. 
this is going to be an interesting Pokemon. And I have to partially agree with what a lot of YouTubers are saying already about this, and that Jingmo O might indeed be a pseudo legendary. This thing is look looks just epic in my opinion, and I really can't wait to have it on my team. And it, the one thing that I will relate this to the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime project that I was working on that I will continue to work on until all of them are released or whatever. I, this is the precise reason that I'm kind of upset in the sense that there's all these cool Pokemon, but, you know, there's only, like, a limited number of slots. Like, if I were to create a fan fiction, basically, of 7th generation, and I could only have six Pokemon, I would be stuck. I mean, I might choose Litten or Rowlet as the obvious starter or whatever, but then I would be stuck because there are a lot of interesting Pokemon in regards to this particular video. In regards to the 7th gen, there's a lowland Pokemon that I would have to take into consideration. There's a really cool a lot of other random Pokemon and stuff. You know, it's really hard to say what would actually what I would actually want on my team. Would I want Picky Peck or would I just get Rowlet to have a grass flying type? It's really hard for me to choose a lot of these Pokemon on the team. So anyway, I don't have the image up for me in person, but one of the Japanese trailers seemed to have revealed Cutie Fly's evolution. I don't know if it's its first stage or its last stage. Unknown. But of course, there is a picture that I will put, I think, right here, maybe. Hold on. Yeah, over here. Of course, there will be a picture of Cutie Fly's evolution, and it looks pretty amazing. It has like a scarf around its neck or whatever. It looks like it could be an evolution to Cutie Fly. Let's see if we can get Cutie Fly to evolve one more time after that so we can get a really nice final evolution, because I don't want Cutie Fly's evolution to only just be about that. So anyway, of course, that's all the new Pokemon, so... Of course, let's go ahead and talk about the. Let's go ahead and talk about the Aether Foundation. The Aether Foundation works in the Alola region. The Foundation's goal is to care for Pokemon that have been hurt. The Aether Foundation was constructed on an on Earth Arda <coughs> constructed on an on artifact constructed an artificial island called Aether Paradise. Yay! I managed to say it properly. And, of course, that's related into this picture of Alola that I will show you. And, of course, that is that little thing that I talked about. I was trying to look at my previous video on the subject, uh, what I thought I speculated, what I ended up speculating on. At one point, I thought maybe it was like some sort of airplane or maybe some kind of giant ship. But I felt like it was like a, it was like a building-sized area or whatever. But I think we can say for certain now, it's confirmed that that middle thing that threw me off when I first saw it was, in fact, Artificial Island or Aether Paradise. So, they provide shelter for Pokemon, but do various research projects. It seems that the main character will also be able to visit Aether Paradise during their adventure, of course. So, of course, we have Lusamine. The lovely Lusamine functions as the Aether Foundation's president, and she has a really nice design. Now, I will talk about this later on when I get to that particular moment, but I just want to point out right now, Lusamine looks very close to Lily, a character that was first introduced into the games when we started learning about alternate characters. Of course, I will have some speculations in regards to that into later, and if you've already seen a lot of these videos, you can probably guess what I'm talking about. So, of course, let's move on to Faba. The Aether Foundation Branch Chief sports green sunglasses. They're a signature accessory. He seems very proud of his position as Branch Chief. When I, of course, saw the preview or the trailer, and he mentioned the artificial island, I was like, oh, finally we got confirmation that the artificial island existed, because I'm not really sure where we got the artificial island uh, speculation from anyway. I, I, I think it was confirmed, but I'm not really sure where it was confirmed, but we actually got full confirmation here with Faba in his text in the game talking about, of course, Aether Paradise. So, of course, let's move on to Wick. 
The assistant branch chief of Aether Paradise has a caring personality, so she's loved by all Aether Foundation employees. So that's really interesting. So I don't know what these roles actually mean. I don't know what it means for Lusamine to be the president, Faba to be the branch chief, or Wick. To, I'm assuming Wick is basically a glorified Faba secretary who probably has her own roles a little bit more than just being Faba's secretary. But I'm assuming Lusamine is the head of Aether Paradise, and Faba is just some head executive or whatever, like uh, like a, a head administrator or something. It's not really hard to say for certain or whatever. So then, of course, we move on to something that I think is really interesting, in my opinion. And of course, that's the employees of the Aether Foundation. The, the reason why I mention this is because I kind of like their designs a lot. I mean, I can see why people might be put off-putting, but it looks really nice that they're wearing these white clothing with a whole bunch of pockets or whatever. Kind of reminds me of, like, Pokemon breeders from the games or whatever that have, like, a whole bunch of Pokemon or whatever, and you can maybe battle them multiple times if you're, if you're out in that particular game or whatever. So it kind of reminds me of them, and it just seems like they have, like, some sort of more... I guess they're, they kind of come off as angelic or a representative of an angelic angelic type design, but not quite being angels, you know? So I feel like that's pretty amazing. So, of course, let's move on to that other character that was revealed. And, of course, that is the Team Skull Enforcer, and that is Gladion. And now, of course, a lot of people are like, hey, he has blonde hair and green eyes. Maybe he's related to Laura Mean, and who knows, maybe he's also related to Lily. That's an interesting thought. Gladian is a is a young man that lends his strength to Team Skull as an enforcer. Some people are like, well, maybe he's the leader or something. No, 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 no. Guzma is this Team Skull boss. Gladian is basically the equivalent of someone that, if you don't make a payment uh, with your Pokemon or money, he'll probably break your legs while... Team Skull Admin Plumeria seems more like someone who deals with the business side. Uh, Gladion seems more like the physical beat the money Pokemon out of you that he would need to get. So, yeah, kind of, he, he, I don't know what Enforcer means in the Pokemon universe in regards to Sun and Moon, but that's what I'm assuming an Enforcer would be in real life, like a mobster or a gangster that has an enforcer that's the guy that actually goes and picks up debts and stuff and if you don't have anything to get or whatever you're either beaten your legs are broken or you end up dead so yeah that's kind of him but I don't know kid friendly version of that so it also says he places high value on being strong in Pokemon battles which is interesting and of course his partner is the mysterious type Noel so I don't know what Type Null's relation is with Gladion. I don't know if there's multiple Type Nulls or he gives Type Null to the player character or it's one of those unobtainable Pokemon type situations. I, I would assume that he, he does have a Type Null, but we get a different Type Null later on in the games because Type Null is constructed so I can imagine there might be multiple versions of it. Or maybe... It's not really his, and he stole it, and he you get to actually capture it, but maybe because you actually obtained it, maybe it has, like, the lowest friend stat or whatever. Like, if it were to use frustration, it'd be, like, very powerful or whatever, and you have to actually, like, raise it from the lowest all the way to the highest for it to actually have any effect. In the trailer we saw, just to let you know, we also saw a Type Null using Tri try attack so just letting you know about that okay so before I get into the really the most important part of this particular video let's go ahead and talk about some of the features real quick but before I do that I want to talk about two Z moves that were revealed uh, on the Nintendo Direct or whatever we talked or it came around that time and apparently there are exclusive Z move. So not only are we getting a Z move for all the types that pretty much all Pokemon can use, there are also Pokemon that will receive their 
own Z move. And we got this with Alolan Raichu with the Z move stoked spark surfer and it basically electrifies its well its entire surrounding area basically the surfboard tail that it has and then it just basically charges at the opponent which is very interesting and based on this it looks like you're going to need a right chulium z because this applies to another Pokemon. And of course that is Snorlax. Snorlax has its own Z move. And it is the Pulverizing Pancake. And you get that by getting a Snorlium Z. Which is uh, uh, attached to a Munchlax. That you get as an event. It has Snorlium, Snorlium Z. It will evolve into Snorlax. And of course such and forth. And it also has Hold Back, which is apparently a new move that is just like False Swipe. Hopefully it's a different type than normal, because having False Swipe is an interesting attack if you want to capture certain Pokemon, but unfortunately it doesn't affect Ghost types, so... Uh, and I don't think Munchlax has Scrappy, so that would be kind of pointless. But hey, interesting. I remember when I created a... a Fault swipe for every single element out there so that you could capture certain Pokemon easier. So, of course, we got the Snorlax, of course, and then it has this pulverizing pancake Z move. So, when you have the Snorlium Z and, and you evolve that Munchlax, you'll, of course, be able to Giga Impact specifically transforms, enabling Zor Snorlax Z move to be used. Experiences. Experience its overwhelming strength and power, and we got this really cool scene of Snorlax laying down, looking up, and then looking like angry, and then charging at its enemy, and basically pulverizing its enemy. That's just all I want to say. Really cool that we're getting more information about Z moves. So it seems like outside of the original 16 or 18 types of Z moves that we're getting, we're also getting additional alternative types. I don't know how far that's going to go. So, of course, let's talk about another feature real quick and of course that's the Pokemon Snap 2 type uh, concept within the actual games and of course that's the Poke Finder feature and you use a Rotom you go to special locations and you can take photos to basically upload and apparently people can like your photos or not so of course your pictures will be evaluated and as you take better pictures more features like the ability to zoom in will become available. Uh, when you see the Poke Finder in certain photo spots scattered throughout a lower region, you can take pictures of Pokemon. We saw Pikachu, and then we also saw Dragonite, which I think is a very interesting feature that we that I can't wait to see. And of course, let's move on to the more interesting feature of Sun and Moon, and that's depending on the version will depend on the time of day that you'll play it at, basically. So if you get Pokemon Sun, apparently it'll just be like a normal playthrough, you'll just play it normally, but if you po if you put in Pokemon Moon, or whatever, it will be the opposite. So basically, let's say it's 7 a.m. here and 7 p.m. in Japan. Playing Pokemon Moon would be like me playing it in Pokemon Sun at the, or like them playing Pokemon Sun or whatever. If, if, if that was complicated, let me rephrase that. Okay, so Pokemon Moon, it will be 7 p.m. when I play a game at 7 a.m., right? But if I'm playing Pokemon Sun, 7 a.m., 7 a.m. So Pokemon Moon is shifted 12 hours out of time. So Right now, it's almost 6 p.m. It would be 6 a.m. in the game time if I was playing Pokemon Moon. And because of this, that they're 12 hours apart, is that there's going to be very different world that they're considered different worlds and different features. And I already mentioned one of them. Uh, there's Totem Gumshoes for Sun and Alolan Raticate for Moon. And it makes sense because... Raticate and Rattata like to work at night as opposed to the day, which seems like something that Young Goose would do and Gumshoes would do and stuff or whatever. And so that makes sense. So there's possibly going to be even more. I think there was one thing where it showed Drifloon and Mischievous. Drifloon in Pokemon Sun while Mischievous in Moon. So there's going to be 
quite a bit of version exclusives, and it makes sense given Pokemon Sun and Moon. So, of course, it, it also says it seems that some of the Pokemon that appear as Totem Pokemon in the trials are also different. So, of course, we'll just have to wait and see what are all the differences when the games come out. So I think that boils down... Oh, one, one last thing, and I'll talk about this real quick, and then we'll move into the big part of the news that was revealed that we need to go over. Dexio and Cinna from X and Y are back to give the player Zygarde Cube so they can go around finding cores and cells. Thankfully, we get confirmation that cores and cells will indeed be in the games. Because I was a little worried about that, but we finally got Zygarde cores and Zygarde cells. Now, here's the interesting thing about that, the uh, finding... Zygarde cores and cells in the Alola region can be found all over the Alola region. Uh, objects giving off light can be found in various locations around the Alola region. These are Zygarde cores and Zygarde cells. You can collect them in the Zygarde cube you receive from Dexio and Cynia. If you collect lots of cores and cells, the path to finding Zygarde in Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon may become clear. Now, what I'm thinking what Zygarde... Uh, the the Zygarde cube will do. Uh, I, I think maybe it'll turn into an item when you find enough Zygarde cores and cells, and it might have the ability to change Zygarde's ability. Like we have an ability changer, I can't remember what it's called, an item that switches between abilities. Unfortunately, it doesn't allow you to get the hidden ability because that would be too easy, apparently, even though it takes forever, apparently, to get one of those types of items to switch abilities. So, yeah, I think what this is, is it's going to change the ability that you find Zygarde 50% form, and it's going to change its ability to that core enforcer ability or whatever it is, where when it reaches a certain thing, it'll actually upgrade or whatever, or maybe you'll actually get Zygarde 10%, and that will determine 50% and then 100% form. So that's all I wanted to say. Interesting. Glad that cores and cells will be in the game. The fact that it says if you collect lots of cores and cells, based on what we've got so far in the anime, it's surprising that we're probably getting more cores than we might think, and even more cells. That's definitely an interesting thought. So of course, let's talk about the most interesting aspect that was revealed in the trailer and today. And of course, that's the mysterious presence that threatens the Alola region, Ultra Beasts. What are these creatures? In the Alola region, rumors are flying about mysterious creatures known as Ultra Beasts. Ultra Beasts possess mighty powers and could pose a threat to humans and Pokemon, so they are feared. It appears that the Aether Foundation is also conducting research on the Ultra Beasts. Uh-oh. According to rumor, multiple Ultra Beasts exist, each of them called by a code name. And of course, the only thing that we got was UB1, or Ultra Beast 1. We got Ultra Beast 1, and it looks like a jellyfish. That kind of has like legs and it kind of has like a skirt dressing going on, like a hat or whatever. And it says UB1's body is composed of a glass like substance. However, it's constantly changing shapes, never settling on one. While evidence of something like survival instinct can be observed in Ultra Beast 1 or UB1, no one knows whether it has will of its own or any emotion. It's said that for some reason its movements resemble those of a young girl. Now, a lot of people are freaking out about this, saying, oh, UB1 is Lily, or Lily is UB1, or something like that. And while I would have no problem with that being the case, and it probably is likely, I, if it is true, the only thing that I can think of is UB1 interacted with Luramine in some fashion or another, like absorbed Luramine's DNA, mixed with its own Ultra Beast DNA, and then became Lily, or maybe Lily was maybe Lily inspired UB1 or has some sort of control over this. The most interesting thing about this is based on the Japanese trailer that actually introduced that. We saw the main characters looking surprised. I think Luramine was there. And we got this like ultra alter dimensional portal opening up. And it's like these are coming from another dimension. And this is interesting because I had thought of this before. Only, I don't know if these are actually Pokemon or not, 
but I actually did create my own Pokemon that were from an alternate region or an alternate dimension. One of them was the Steel Dark Demonic Pokemon-like thing that had a specific signature move called the Vortex Hammer. I was pretty happy about that, even though I'm not really sure the design was Pokemon enough or whatever. But then I think I also created like some sort of virus of some kind, I believe, that was from the alternate dimension, and you had to catch these with these special Pokeballs, except that uh, Steel Dark demonic Pokemon because that already that was like one of the first dimensional Pokemon that came into the world or whatever and that's why it like had a habitat and grew and, and that's pretty much why you can catch it normally but the other ones you had to actually go into like a pocket dimension or something and they would be like wild or whatever and there would be like many like I believe places where you could actually go into the dimension and you would like get a certain amount of Pokemon, but then you'd have to go somewhere else and look around for different Pokemon. So like uh, in Heart Home City or whatever, there might be a Dimension Portal that has like a Grass type or something, a Grass Dark, Grass Poison or something like that. But if you went to like Veilstone City or whatever, that would have its own Dimensional Portal that leads to a different part that would have something like that. So yeah, kind of like... Uh, like an underground Sinnoh, you know, like in the fourth game, fourth gen games where you could go underground, like under Sinnoh, kind of like that, but with like different Pokemon at those little particular parts, but you can only go so far. So I don't know if, if it's going to be similar to that because so far these don't look like Pokemon, or if they are some kind of Pokemon, it's not going to be something that you can capture. I don't know if these have types or anything. This is definitely interesting. This would be an interesting concept to have like Pokemon that can't be captured or anything of that nature because I, I, don't, I don't know if they would want to do something like that. Now a lot of people are like, no, keep the Ultra Beast something uncatchable. Have them be like Pokemon but you can't capture. You know, and people bring up the legendaries like Arceus and stuff or whatever. And I'm thinking about that and I'm like, why do, would that make any sense? You know, Pokemon is all about having able to have access to all of these creatures that you can use for your own. It like literally makes no sense to add legendary Pokemon that you only battle, that you never get to play with yourself. The combinations, the types, the moves, that you don't get to play with yourself. Now while Ultra Beast might be different, I'm just a little concerned because I don't know entirely what this means, and I hope we get some clarification in the future of whether or not they're actual Pokemon or whatever. I wouldn't necessarily mind if these were like uh, humanoid species, like like let's say Dragon Ball Super or whatever. Like this would be the equivalent of a Namekian species, or a I guess a Saiyan species or whatever. But they're not actually like Pokemon, but they're just like an alternative. Uh, species within the games outside of human and Pokemon we have Ultra Beasts. So I don't know, and if they if they can be battled, what exactly does that mean? Do they have their own type? Do you battle them with a Pokemon? Uh, do you do you, do they have their own types? Maybe they have a dimensional type and they actually are Pokemon, but because they're from a different dimension they require a very specific new typing maybe that's what that is I don't know uh, do they have their own Pokemon do they create these weird uh, ultra beast colored schemed version of their Pokemon that you have to fight to have the same thing but you can't like capture them or whatever you can't get them and only ultra beasts have them the thing that's interesting is if we assume that Lily is ultra beast one or something similar to that if we in fact go to what Lily said, there is one thing that does catch my attention, and of course that was something about her personality that was very notable. And of course it was, she's not fond of making Pokemon fight in battles. Now if Ultra Beast are Pokemon, that would make some sense, you know. Pokemon not fond of Pokemon battling, but if Ultra Beasts aren't like Pokemon or whatever, it, this would seem like contradictory in my opinion, because it seems like Lily is just like this alien that's basically saying, 
Oh, I, I don't know your culture at all, but I'm not liking the way that you're treating Pokemon. So, I mean, there are humans that definitely do that. They butt into other people's business that they have no belong belonging. I really don't want to get into that subject because that's like a whole can of worms that I don't want to go into. But humans are kind of like that, uh, being offended for things that they shouldn't be offended over. As opposed So it's like... If this, if these aren't Pokemon, it'd be the equivalent of a non-Pokemon being upset that a Pokemon who probably likes to battle Pokemon is being forced to battle or whatever it is. Was it force or just making Pokemon fight? Yeah, it's like, it's like she's Lily is thinking that these Pokemon are forced to battle against their will, but anyone who's a Pokemon fan knows that only in extreme examples will we ever get a Pokemon that is forced to fight against its will. So that's kind of the issue that I have with that particular situation. Well, it's not really an issue, just something that I'm gonna that I brought up. So anyway, that's all I want to cover in this particular video. Koro Koro is coming up really soon. I'm sure we'll get Rockruff's evolution. I don't know if they're gonna reveal anything else. I don't really expect it. Koro Koro has one of those things where they don't really reveal all that much. But I do expect Rockruff's evolution, and I can't wait to see that. So I don't know what my next video in regards to Sun and Moon is going to be outside of that. I don't know if there's any theories that I need to discuss or anything of that nature. So, of course, let's just move on from there. So anyway, thank you for watching. I'm Dustin Benzel, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.